Our first item of business this evening is the public hearing on the district code of conduct and the district safety plan. I'd like to make everyone aware that there are copies of this information on the table in the corner of the auditorium. Dr. Noriega. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, tonight, we'd like to make a presentation of the proposed changes to the code of conduct for the 2010-11 school year. And um, there are two types of changes that have been proposed, and those are substantive changes and some formatting changes, and they are outlined in the four-page document that you mentioned before, and in a document that is in front of a board member also. Um, the first change consists of a, including in the code a page that uh, clarifies uh, the functions and the purpose of the SAFE committee. And it's number one on the page uh, that you have in front of you. <coughs> the second page, the second change on page six of the code includes a statement uh, under the section essential partners which clarifies uh, the supervision during transition times as needed if needed. The third page also on page six of the code uh, consists of adding two statements to clarify uh, further the functions of the Board of Education pertaining to the Code of Conduct uh, submitting it to the Commission of Education after an annual review that is done every year and what we are doing is codifying that in the code. The next change on page 8 is adding a statement pertaining to video surveillance and it's at the bottom of that page in front of you, the document in front of you. That's number four. The next change proposed is including a section that highlights the importance of providing information and in service training to the partners who play an essential role in the fair and informed implementation of the code and the statement is on the number five at the top of the next page. The next page, the next change would be on page 10 and it consists of expanding a paragraph under student discipline code to uh, highlight that uh, there are several proactive processes for conflict resolution that will be researched further. The next change also on page 10 would be expanding the third paragraph in the section disciplinary consequences to clarify the connection between the options available under each level of consequence and the chart that is included in the code. The next change on page 19 would be just clarifying that whenever designee is referred to as a designee of a principal, it is an administrative designee. The next change is on page 19 and it is uh, a paragraph complementing <coughs> this section that talks about the requirement that uh, the district provide continued educational programming and activities for the students who are removed from the classroom. And the paragraphs suggested are on the document at the top of the third page except that uh, at the end of the first paragraph, we are 
stopping where it says environment and not adding and rewards for improved behavior. Change would be on page 20, and it consists of clarifying under the section suspension process the requirement that a student be suspended from school upon the fourth removal. And the next change would be on page 30, adding under the computer and internet use a fifth, uh, number five, a line that reads uh, including sexual violence or other sexually charged electronic communication as a violation that gives rise to disciplinary action. And the next change would be on page 30 and it it's the same, uh, it's uh, a clarification that whenever the word designee is used as a designee of the principal, it would be an administrative designee. And the last change on page 32 would be modifying section J, which is suspension from extracurricular and co-curricular activities and school functions by adding some texts that is referenced to the attendance and the credit policies. And those would be the, the changes that are substantive, Madam President. Uh, the other changes are formatting changes, and they are common and uh, consistent modifying or aligning the various documents related to the code so that they reflect all the changes that have been suggested, updating the table of contents, the composition of the safe committee, any typos were needed, the central office staff list and the board of education member list, as well as the tier of page for parents and eligible students to confirm receipt of the code. And finally, uh, aligning the Spanish translation of the code to the English version. And those are the, the changes that are being proposed in that present. Do you have any questions or comments from <coughs> in regards to what Dr. Noriega has presented? Okay. Can we move on then, Dr. Noriega, to the presentation of the 2011-2012 district safety plan? Thank you, Madam President, and as you indicated before, documents are also available in the back of the room, and those are summaries, two summaries. One is a summary of the district safety plan, and the other one is a summary of the school safety plans. And those summaries address the various areas that are included in the plan, such as identifying school teams, informing staff about the way the plans operate, um, designation of school teams, how to reduce or prevent and intervene when there are crises, strategies, training of personnel, how to coordinate with emergency response <coughs> officials from the towns, the municipalities, identifying sites of potential emergencies, responsibilities of staff when planning or responding to crisis and the aftermath of a crisis, um, guidelines for determining hazards and what to do in various situations, and we needed evacuation procedures. Also, recovery, what to do when there is a need to continue to provide support after a crisis, 
beyond the crisis itself. And then at the end, a series of suggested appendixes where people can go and uh, find out additional information. And uh, it's similar for the district-wide school safety plan and the district emergency response team has reviewed the plan and the procedures <coughs> and they will be disseminated as appropriate to the school administrators for the information. So the plan remains because it's been consistently reviewed on a yearly basis. I would just be uh, a matter of changing dates <coughs> after today's uh, presentation at the public here. Thank you, Madam President. Are there any questions or comments regarding the district's uh, safety plans? I will entertain public discussion and comments on the um, proposed changes to these plans as they've been presented here this evening. If anyone has public discussion or comment on these plans, please step to the podium and give your name and address. <coughs> Being none, I will adjourn the public hearing on the district's code of conduct and the district safety plan. Thank you, Dr. Rieta. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, I will call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Education. We will stand and be led in the pledge by Mr. Levinson. Bond payments, debt payments, and capital 
expenditures are either because of revenue or expense in these statements. Uh, general fund revenues were $222 million. Your expenditures were $220 million, with some operating transfers heading out of another um, almost $9 million, leaving a deficit in the general fund for the year of $6.7 million. Okay? When you take that consideration with all the funds for the district, uh, the total revenues were $248 million. The liabilities or expenditures, we should say, were $269 million. And when everything's said and done, leave you with deficit, leave you with a deficit, or left you with a deficit of $15.2 million um, for the entire district as a whole. Okay, now that's on the fund statements. If, if, and I won't do this in more detail with the audit committee, but um, the highlights, the assets, when we go to full accrual, we're bringing all the capital assets, we bring in the uh, equipment of the uh, Buildings of the district net of accumulated depreciation, which was about $143 million. Free total assets up to about $202 million. Your liabilities, once you bring in your, your long term debt, bonds payable, post employment benefits for um, retirees' health insurance, um, judgments and claims, and so forth, brings your liabilities up to about $228 million, leaving your net assets up, still a deficit of $26 million. Okay, that's a deficit. A big part of that reason is because you have, as I told the audit committee, post-employment benefits. That is just a staggering number, okay, for retirees health insurance. Um, real quickly, so that, that's the general fund and just a real quick overview of the district. The um, I just want to say the district got a clean opinion, which is good. They got an unqualified opinion. Everything was materially stated properly. We had no problems with the district. So it's a good thing. Um, we found no problems there. The federal awards, we have to do an audit of the district is required to have an audit of the federal awards. The federal expenditures of the district um, were just over $18 million. And that was, is, that, that's comprised of federal programs in the school lunch program, the school lunch fund, the special aid fund, and the um, general fund. Okay, the total is actually $18.2 million of federal expenditures. We're required to be in, in accordance with government voting standards to do an audit over those programs and Sure that the district complied with laws and regulations. And again, happy to say we had no problems. The district complied with all uh, the, the compliance requirements that, that are put out by the federal government and <coughs> the federal awards or the federal awards. Lastly, we did an audit of the extra classroom activities. These are on a cash basis, and these are the activities run by the students of the district. Um, and we had an audit of those activities as well. And the, the activities. Um, for those of you without the same in front of you, you started the year with $225,000 in student activities and ended the year with about $212,000. And, um, and again, this is on a cash basis, so if there's any liabilities or receivables out there, it's not reflected. But you know, we gave the district got a clean opinion there as well. Okay, um, So everything was fairly stated. Um, really, that's in a nutshell. Really quick, again, I went in much more detail with the audit committee. Um, I'd like to thank the district, the finance department, and Mike, and the department uh, did an excellent job. Books and records were, were, were real, real clean this year, real well kept, and the district has a lot of good controls in place. So I want to thank the district amended, and um, if you have any questions, otherwise, thank you very much. Are there any questions from the board members for Mr. Levy? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Levy. Item on the agenda is public discussion and comment on agenda items. Anyone wishing to speak on agenda items, please step to the podium and give your name and address. Good evening. My name is Bill Davis. I live on Concord Road in Fishkill. I may look familiar to you since I spoke to you at this public forum last month at the meeting on Tuesday, August 30th. That night, I told you that my wife and I have two children that attend school in the district. The issue I spoke of was lack of having a valid IESP from the special ed department with school scheduled to start the very next week. Assistant Superintendent oh, Roger, I believe. Forge. Forge. Thank you. Was kind enough to approach me after the meeting and accept a copy of our three-week-old letters that had not been responded to and assured me he would deliver them 
to the appropriate party. I want to thank him for stepping up. I can assure you that Superintendent Superintendent Forgett delivered the letter as he promised, but apparently his involvement was the extent of primary attention from your district. Midday that Friday, now just one and a half business days before the start of the school year, we received a call from the CSE chair responsible for the IASP, who told us that she had just gotten out of a very long meeting and had been given our letter. She stated she had not, had, had not been able to read it yet. It was only two and a half pages I would have held. But she said she would take it home and call us following the long weekend. We voiced concern because our daughter's need for services to start timely. It had been several weeks without services, and she was noticeably regressing. Waiting was not an option. We were told to have her start on day one with the speech person. Tuesday came, the call was received. The, chair, the CSE chair stated that we needed to meet to discuss the letter. During the short conversation, she stated that she was confused. confused since, for example, we noted individual speech services should have been documented five times a week. She stated that she was looking at her notes from the CSE meeting, which was held on May 18th, and it was clearly the one-time individual, four-time group in the question to ISP. We set an appointment to meet and finally met on Friday, September 9th. We came to the meeting and were met by two people from the special ed department. The first words from them were to tell us that technically, being a district of location, district of residence issue, the regulations now said that Newburgh did not have to provide services as they would if, in fact, we resided in a district, but that they were sure we would be happy with their decision. I won't bore you with a discussion about the proper interpretation of Regulations Part 200, since my time here is somewhat limited. The CSE chair stated that she checked her notes, and we were correct with the number of sessions. Apparently, her notes had transformed during that week. The meeting lasted a while, with most points settled and agreed to. But your CSE people needed to check to see if they could stand by their unilateral removal of and claim that they could not place certain statements regarding needs of the child in the ISP. The statements in question are the same ones unilateral, unilaterally removed each of the previous two years by Newburgh, even though my own district specifically put them in there since they are vital to the appropriateness of services. Ironically, one of the CSE persons stated several times during that meeting that my district must have put those statements in to cover their ass. My apologies, that's her words. I was taken back since making an individualized education plan comprehensive to address the unique needs of an individual child seemed to be first correct, and secondly, important to ensure the appropriateness of services. After the meeting on the way home, it occurred to me that the entire thought process of who is trying to cover whose ass really should not have entered into anyone's mind since the purpose of the meeting, and for that matter, the very existence of these people, was to be sure that this child and all children with needs receive services that are appropriate. To date, we still have no IESP for either of my children from the New Bergen Large City School District. Fortunately, for my daughter, she is getting the appropriate services required since we were verbally given authorization by that CSE chair during the September 6th phone call to have the speech pathologist see her. This brings up issue two. As you see, there are several parents here, and I assume you're aware of the purple one. Oh, is it something I said? No. <laughs> this brings up issue two. As you can see, there are several parents here, and I assume you're aware of the turmoil over related services that Bishop done. Since my allotted time is short, I will give you the reduced digest version like condensed version. Okay? We repeatedly were told not to worry. The speech pathologist would be there. This OCS thing was just a formality to correct an improper funding avenue by the district that had been taking place for years. Recent developments bring to question the integrity of the information from your district, as well as the motivation of some of your employees. The State Ed Department has assured all parties <coughs> that contracting directly with the speech pathologist through her agency would be appropriate and well within regulations. This option seems to have been discarded by you for whatever reason. The Ulster, Ulster BOCES avenue being pushed, although not against regulations, seems contorted. The it's just a formality explanation regarding this was erroneous to say the least, or was it pur purposeful disinformation? The Newburgh and Large City School District sent the IEPs 
IESPs of many of the children's proceeds without notification to or consent from parents. This is ironic since the IESP for my kids is still wrong. The hiring process of compulsory proceeds seems suspect. How is it possible that somebody there could decide that whoever they have apparently hired is a better employee and fit than Mr. Gerard, Bishop Dunn, who has years of experience and most importantly, a strong track record of results with her kids? Yes, I said her kids. She services them as if they were her own children. She sees them as unique individuals, not just sessions to be scheduled. For years, I've heard educational professionals profess that they do it for the children. I can assure you, the vast majority don't come close to Mr. Gerard. I am aware of the report that a particular person cannot be requested that anybody with certification be slotted in. In fact, a different CSC chair in Newburgh here once actually told me that a speech pathologist, speech therapist, speech provider, they're all the same. I can assure you it is not synonymous. The question arises is, is the appropriateness of the services and for that matter these events. My children like most, if not all children, I'm sorry, my children like most, if not all the children being placed in jeopardy have disabilities. They have been thriving to the extent possible and in fact exceed expectations constantly. Children with disabilities do not handle change well. Having the rug pulled out from under them will cause harm. Trust with a child with disability is an important thing that takes time to develop. To rip that trust away makes it even harder to earn it back and it will take a much longer time. Time is not something my child has to waste. To use our children for, uh, I'm sorry, to use our children, or for that matter, any child as forms is despicable. The turmoil being shoved into our children's lives would be difficult to mitigate if absolutely necessary. But to cause harm, even though options exist that would prevent it, is just plain wrong. I respectfully ask that each of you get involved with this issue. Whatever internal issues or agendas exist inside the Newburgh large city school district. Please, don't let it harm the children. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. We have recorded your comments.
um, that we established the district had no real uh, basis. Um, you all have some big issues that you will have to answer for in the coming uh, weeks and months. And all really, this could all be avoided if we just continue with the contract with this authority. Um, so we humbly request that you consider our plea in the context of this agenda item, assuming the agenda item has to be with the contract. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McElda. We have recorded your comments. comments on public comments and discussion on agenda items. Being none, we will move on. Next item on the agenda is from the board president. First item that I have for your consideration <coughs> is a resolution to adopt the district statement of core values and beliefs, vision and mission. I have um, provided copies on the back table where we have other documents available to the public. And I have a motion on this resolution. Sure. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Prokash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Item I have for your consideration is a resolution to approve the adoption of revised policy number 7510, community use of school facilities, on uh, two readings. Copies of this policy are on the table in the corner of the room. Can I have a motion? No, no, Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. Resolution A to approve facilities project change orders associated with approved projects. South Middle School renovations project. Middle Hill School project. Temple Hill School Renovations Project. Can I have a motion? I'll move. Okay. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Ratch? Yes. Mr. Benson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Resolution B is uh, a walk in, it's in your packet. And I will read it. <coughs> Where is the Board of Education? In accordance with Article 5A of the General Municipal Law, has invited sealed bids for the furnishing of material and labor necessary for the district's heritage masonry wall and flat roof project, which bids were opened publicly on September 23rd, 2011. And whereas the bids for the above project came in over budget, and the Board of Education believes it to be in the best interest of the school district to revise the bid specifications to rebid the project as two separate projects. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education, in the best interest of the school district, hereby rejects all bids for the Heritage Masonry Wall and Flat Roof Project and authorizes the owner's representative and architect to review and revise the bid specifications and to rebid the project. I have a motion. Oh, second. The architect is here in case the board has any questions. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mrs. Prokash? Yes. Mrs. Rash? Yes. Mr. Benson? Yes. Mr. Whittle? Yes. Mr. Wichek? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent of Student Intervention and Support Services. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, resolution A to approve the District Code of Conduct 
for the 2011-2012 school year. Make a motion. So Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Carpatch? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Resolution B, to approve the district safety plan for the 2011-2012 school year. I have a motion. Resolution C to authorize the superintendent of schools to enter into contract with NYSED approved supplemental education services SES providers. May I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Resolution D to approve facility use requests submitted by Gilant at Newburgh and Core Dance, Greater Newburgh Symphony Orchestra, Hudson Valley Council of a Square and Round Dance, Hudson Valley Nighthawks, Newburgh and Arcity School District, two requests. Quick Strike Football Club and the Town of New Windsor Recreation Department. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Crowcatch? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Chen? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. That concludes my items. Thank you, Dr. Marieta. Next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to pass my agenda for this evening. The item I'd like to add is, will be item J. It is a resolution to authorize the Board of Education to approve the participation of NFA North Campus Peer Leadership Sherpa Group to attend an overnight field trip to Black Rock Forest in Cornwall, New York. From October 26th to 28th. I have a motion to add resolution J to the agenda. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Legacy? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Procash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. My first item are recommendations from the Committees on Special Education. My next item would be the resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a consultant agreement with the Center for Discovery to provide assistive technology evaluations to particular students with disabilities. Funding source for the IDEA Part B, Section 611. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Procash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Item C. Resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an extension to a consultant agreement with Thomas Inc. and LLC to provide professional development and procedural and protocol to district special educators. Funding source would be IDEA Part B, Section 611. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Procash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Item D is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a consultant agreement with Val Nehick to provide initial training and coaching to district general and special educators in the area of behavioral concerns in the classroom. Funding source is IDEA Part B, Section 611. Can I have a motion? No. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Item D is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to exec
Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Goldrash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yeah. Mr. Beisley? Yes. Mr. Whitehall? Yes. Mr. Chen? Yes. Item E is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an extension to a consultant agreement with the prison group to provide initial training and coaching in the area of integrated co-teaching to district, general, and special educators. Funding source, IDEA Part B, Section 611. Do I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Yes. 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 Item F is a resolution to authorize the Board of Ed Board President to enter into an articulation agreement between Lincoln Technical Institute, Mawa Campus, and Newburgh Free Academy for the DP 516 Medical Assistant Program. Can I have a motion? Um, second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Item G is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute a license agreement with Newburgh Capital Group LLC to use space at the Newburgh Mall by the Newburgh Free Academy School to Work Program. Can I have a motion? Ooh, second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. <coughs> Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. 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 Item H is a resolution to authorize the Executive Director of Curriculum and Instruction to execute a College Readiness System Products Agreement with College Boards. I have a motion. Thank you. 
Resolution L is a resolution to adopt the revised 2011-2012 district calendar. The revision is that the district will now be in session on December the 23rd and closed on January the 2nd. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Carpatch? Yes. Ms. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesey? Yes. Mr. Wendell? Yes. Ms. Richard? Yes. Resolution M is resolution to approve Schedule J appointments for the 2011-2012 school year. Can I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Prokash. I'd like to move this uh, <coughs> uh, resolution to um, executive session to be good for clarification on a number of votes. Can I have a motion to table this item for further discussion in the executive session? No. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Perfash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bessley? Yes. Mr. Wendell? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Resolution N is a resolution to approve additional full athletic coaching appointments for 2011 2012. Can I have a motion? I move. Okay. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mrs. Carpatch? Yes. Mrs. Rack? Yes. Mr. Vesey? Yes. Mr. Whittle? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. yes. Resolution O is resolution to approve the winter athletic coaching appointments for 2011-12. I have a motion. Mm -hmm. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesey? Yes. Mr. Whittle? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Resolution P is to create the following teacher positions, a point one foreign language teacher and a point five ESL teacher. Funding is through the fund balance. Can I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call. <coughs> Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Lovash? Yes. Ms. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Wendell? Yes. Ms. Kuchak? Yes. Resolution Q is to create the following positions. Two teaching assistant positions and nine, that ESL is a mistake. That should just say nine teacher aid positions. And the funding is to come down. Can I have a motion? Yes, Mr. Levinstein. I, I just would like to clarify a couple of things. Um, these are one-on-one -on -one positions of which nine students require an aide and two require an assistant. That's correct. And the 11 people that are filling these are coming from the recall list that we have. Yes. And the only other thing is I know that there's one of the teaching assistants that are on the recall list, but on the, the aides, how many are there? There are eight. So then, if there's more needed, uh, where will they come from? That would be a local decision that we could make, so we could um, possibly offer it to a teaching assistant, as long as they were willing to work for a teacher aid um, salary. They would remain on the recall list for teaching assistants, so they, there would be no harm that way. Or we could offer it to others that were appropriately qualified to do that job that may also be on other recall lists. Thank you. Other questions or comments on this item? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Parkash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Wendell? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> resolution R is a resolution to approve appointments for the 21st century after school program at Horizons on the Hudson. Funding source is the 21st Century Program Grant. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Wendell? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. 
Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Patrick Lee? Yes. Mr. Potash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Hesley? 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 Yes. Yes. Resolution S is to approve the appointment of individuals to the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics the STEM program in SUNY Albany. The funding source is Title I, Section 1003G, the School Improvement Grant. I have a motion. No so more. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Tosh? Yes. yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Wesley? Yes. Mr. Wimble? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Resolution T is a resolution to appoint individuals to the positions for the Employee Preparation Education Program. The funding source is the Epic Grant. I have a motion. No more. Second. Questions or comments? This community is aware 
that they are legal fears concerning this matter, and we are prepared to be patient with the process. But I want the board to understand that this matter is not going away with the use of appeasement. One of ours has been mistreated, and the treatment not only affects a dedicated, caring, highly qualified person, but the education and care of the students to come. Enough is enough. If it takes the court to correct this action, I stand to tell you the, the community is prepared to do just that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Talley. I will just say um, that this is a personnel matter that is under investigation, so we are not at any liberty to discuss anything about that particular item that you're referencing. So what you're saying is, this is as much of a response that I'm going to get. Correct. At this time, because until the investigation is done, there is absolutely no public comment that can be made in regards to this Board of Education. So there is no way that you can inform the community what's going on here, except what you're saying now? That's what you're until saying. after the matter is investigated and there's some sort of resolution. Well, how long does the investigation take? I have no idea. <coughs> <laughs> well, I think that would be good if the community would have some idea of at least how long the investigation is going to take. Because as long as we prolong it, then it only brings frustration to the community. And the community at this point is saying, no, we are not going to just sit around and let this happen without us knowing something definitely that's happening. And I understand your frustration, Ms. Talley. Uh, I, I can ask the attorney what the average length of time is for this type of investigation, but you know, I, I regret that I don't think you know, I, I'm going to have any more very specific answers for you in regards to how long it will take. It will take as long as it takes for the process to be completed around this investigation. Well, I think it would be helpful if the uh attorney would give us at least some estimation of how long it would take. Okay. That I'll, way, it would know. we are patient. I will be happy to reach out and, and ask for um, a general idea of how long it might take. Thank you. Thank you. comments uh, in the portion on uh, agenda items, not being sure if the issue I was commenting on had relevance to, uh, to agenda item 7C. So uh, just being cautious to make sure my comments are considered to the extent that the contract that is being entered into uh, to replace the service provided by Mrs. Gerard uh, had not been approved by the board. I, I, to be approved in the future, I wish to take this opportunity to some of our comments for not everyone. And I don't need to repeat them, but we take that for consideration. Thank you, Mr. Matilda. Grace Folks, 125 North uh, I would like to ask a couple of questions about the um, varsity basketball coaching position. Is there a job description already written for this position? Is there a job description already written for this position? Mr. Slayman? Not that I'm aware of. Um, you do have people applying, am I right, for that position? Yes. And there's no job description? Correct. <laughs> okay. Is, 
there going to be a job description with it? Is there going to be a job description with it? the job description? The district. The district? Who is the district? Well, there certainly would be input from um, central administration okay. and I would, the athletic director would have input and other stakeholders that might have um, knowledge of how to write this job description, and also the attorneys normally provide examples of other job descriptions that are used in other places. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, in other words, you've posted this position, but there is no job description. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Um, will you be interviewing candidates inside and outside of the district? Yes. My next question was, has a committee, has the committee members been selected? But I guess if there's no job description, I guess then there's no committee members that have been selected. Uh, who, do you know who will be on this committee once you um, start the process? I do not know. Human Resources is in the process of discussing with the athletic director the makeup of such a committee. Okay. My one point here is, I hope that no one who has had anything to do with the varsity basketball scandal should come anywhere near this committee. Mm -hmm. I hope that the person that you select has the character of many of the retired coaches. I hope that you hire a person who will not only give our young men the skills on the court, but all become a total mentor to these guys in their educational pursuit, their character. Know what time they go to bed. Know what time they get up. Don't be afraid to go to where they live. Know what they eat for breakfast. Know what their grades are. Please don't be sorry. Know what their grades are on a daily basis. Talk college to them. Uh, make them set some goals. In other words, become a parent because this is what we were when we were teachers, right, Judy? In other words, coaches, especially on the varsity level, are teachers, counselors, leaders, friends, communicators, administrators, and guardians. He or she will most likely be the one to create a vision for these young men. But if they do their job and do it well, they will connect with coaches on a lower level to begin to mentor the elementary and middle school basketball players. Above all, they will be the one when the spectators look over at the bench or on the court doing a game, say, wow, the coach is in charge, not the players. Okay. My second uh, concern is, I asked a group of questions last, um, Hmm. about the NFA principalship. I asked a group of questions, and well, has a job description been written? Well, I, I, maybe I should ask, has that process begun yet? The process itself has not begun yet. We have um, had a job description written, and we have taken the next step in regards to um, how we would be conducting a search for firms um, that would help us in the selection for that position. And we have received to review a request for quotes statement um, that would be going out to different search firms. And um, once that is done, then the timeline would be put in place once the board decides which search firm will be helping us to seek a qualified candidate for that position. I'm hoping you follow through on that search. 
Um, just in relationship to the reports, NFA should not linger on with an interim. We need someone to come in with a plan to move the school from failure to success. That's what we need. And don't need status quo. Last but not least, is, is there anything written that says we as the community cannot be, have attached to the agenda a, a list of the conferences? You can certainly have a copy of that, Ms. Spore. No, I, 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 no, I want it over there so that everybody can see it. I just want everybody to know where our teachers, our board members, what conferences they are attending, and where the um, money is coming from, and the cost of it. Can we have that attached to the agenda in the future? Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Foles.
Michelle McLeod. Um, I was one of the people that you know, talking to him and asking him to come up here. Um, if he would be interested in a new job. He had a sight in his voice on some of the things that came across to me and the things I've never heard him say um, about how he can develop the program, what he can do for a school. Um, when you think about who you guys want to select as a candidate, just remember that many of the people who are applying are already in the school district and I have nothing against them. Um, they could be great coaches, yes, but they were all part of these kids when they were in seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth grade before they got to varsity. They coached them. They had a chance to work with them. We need somebody that can really work with these kids who can identify with them, who came from a similar background. Um, he's just a very well spoken person. One of the things um, he brought up to me, he said, one of the things I would love to do once the varsity team is announced, I would go and create a star and place it in their house so when people in the community walk by, they would know the varsity basketball player lives here and it'll bring pride to the community, also bring a need to get to the game to see this kid and help support that kid and get him to the next level. Um, yeah, I've, I've been on, following the team closely for the last uh, four years, um, very closely. I've been to pretty much every game, even the expedition games, I've traveled to St. Anthony. I've actually seen them beat St. Anthony's in a scrimmage game. The same year St. Anthony went on to win the championship of the <coughs> that same year. Um, very talented kid, and there's no excuse for them not going to college. And, you know, we as a community would rather not see them play in high school, you know, see them be told they can't play, they can practice with the team, whatever. But we don't want to see them play all these years and then see no college education or nothing afterwards. So, so I'm, I'm just going to um, hand off to you his application to these facts to me. Um, you know, the original will be coming, a signed copy of the mail, but I just want you to know it's here announced today and I'm going to present it to you. And, um, you know, it's, he's not a teacher. But he has a psychology major um, at Duke University, and like I said, very well spoken. It's just about these kids like no one else could, and I just hope you can see Thank you, Mr. Keenan. Do you have any other comments on non agenda items? myself. 
but to be hiring people for a position that you don't even have a detail of what you want them to do amazes me. Now, I, I'm just a small-minded girl. I don't mind. But the fact of the matter is, that's really challenging for me. That's challenging that people can continually, it's like a wheel, you are on a wheel. You keep doing things to people, doing things to people. If anybody sticks up their head to say anything, then you send the pit bulls out. Or whoever you think is the pit bulls out to get you. Or you get somebody that wants to slam their hand on the fist on the tables to try to intimidate people. I, I'm really surprised that you people are the ones in charge from what I've seen in the last 12 years. Now keep on doing what you're doing, but someday there, there's got to be a judgment. And I'm not even looking for that heaven or hell stuff. I'm just looking for some justice. All right.
we have anyone else that would like to speak <coughs> on agenda items? Okay. Thank you all very much. Be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purpose to review employment history of particular individuals. The board may take further action after the executive session. Can I have a motion? Roll call, please. Yeah. 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 Thank you everyone for being here. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. 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 Yeah. Resolution M is a resolution to approve the Schedule J appointments for the 2011-2012 school year. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Me up. Yeah. Yes. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So we'll second. All no. those in favor? No. Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I want to eight to one. No. Thank you. <laughs>